What's up guys, it's Myers from Audio Judgment and today we are going to do a project which makes sense. Why do I say that? It's because we are going to use the same speaker drivers from another project which didn't make a lot of sense. It's from this video where I made a high-end portable Bluetooth speaker. Problem was that it wasn't that portable, I think it had like 7-8 kilograms and the sound quality could have been better as there are too many electronical components two amps in a DSP, and it was very difficult to separate the signal wires from the power wires in such a tight space, and therefore the noise floor was above average. To be completely honest with you, the reasoning behind that video was to make a clickbaity thumbnail coupled with the good video content and try to make a semi-viral video. While I did prepare myself mentally for my future YouTube celebrity status, it didn't really work out as I planned. So, I salvaged all the components from that speaker and used them to create a pair of bookshelf speakers. Now, before I start playing the building process with some upbeat music on the background, I want to quickly explain what I did and what you should look after. First of all, let's talk about the speakers themselves. The goal was to make a high-end bookshelf speaker with the smallest footprint possible. These Morel speakers are awesome for this. The bass driver has a low QTS, which means it's well suited for bass reflex and also the volume uh, requirements are low, resulting in a small box. However, the smaller the enclosure, the longer the port needs to be, and no chance in fitting that pipe inside the box. Solution to this problem? Passive radiator. Got this massive passive radiator from SB Acoustics and you can see that it barely fits on the back panel. So the box cannot get any smaller than this. Since this is a tight fit, even for the binding post I struggle to find an adequate space. To keep the size down I use 10mm thick MDF but larger 18mm for the front baffle and back panel. The crossover is assembled directly on the bottom board, that's why when I start the building video, it will start directly with the crossover assembly. Regarding the finish, I use some zebra wood veneer. I'm usually good with applying veneer, but only if the edges are squared. This is the first time I applied veneer to a chamfered edge. Since this has a small baffle, you need to reduce the edge diffraction effect by rounding the edges. Since applying veneer to a rounded edge seemed impossible to me, I tried to do it on a chamfered edge. Well, this is no problem on the side edges, as it's along the grain of the veneer and it bends without any fuss, you can't do it on the top edge as it bends against the grain and it will crack the veneer. For the top and bottom edge, I just use a separate veneer strip. While this does work, the separation is obvious and it doesn't look that nice. If you guys know the correct uh, solution to apply veneer in this case, please let me know in the comments. Also regarding the veneer type itself, a zebrano, how it's called, I pretty much hate it. For the most part, it's just like any other veneer except when you get to the dark stripes, which are very stringy. So you have to be really gentle with this under one millimeter sheet of wood when you cut it, except it's super strong when you get to the dark lines. So good luck with that. As always, you will find in the description a detailed guide on how to build these things, with all of the components and crossover design. Right now, I'm going to show you the building process, and at the end, we're going to look at the frequency response. Have fun watching.
as you can see from this chart, the frequency response is nice and flat and it plays linearly down to 55-60 Hz, which is impressive for this size of speaker. Slight bump at around 800-900 Hz, which is most likely due to the small baffle size and another in the very high frequencies, which I don't really care about because no one hears that high anyway. The crossover design is super simple, just a two-way crossover with an attenuation L-pad on the tweeter. Now I know that you want some recordings with these speakers and I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to show you some clips with the woofers flexing. Having the experience from last time with the floor standing speakers, my microphone has an unnatural recording when it comes to speakers. I don't know why, so no point in doing that. That's it for today. Thanks for staying with me till the end. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Peace!